business. See, that's kind of yeah. It's a so yeah. it's interesting. It's cool. Right. Just, uh, that's why the city is mm-hmm. fascinating. Too, like, yeah, it's, yeah, not, it's, it's not, it's not a normal landscape. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's so it's very much to new life for people about New York City. I don't necessarily deal with the slides quite yet. Uh, but One Million Cups is a program. My name is Eric Rins Whitmore. I'm one of the organizers. Uh, One Million Cups is a program from the Kauffman Foundation intended to bring entrepreneurs together, share their stories so we learn about uh, their struggles, what's going on with their businesses. And ideally, we have a conversation about how to help those companies grow. Um, let's see. It feels like we've got three organizers in the house. Lisa is still working with some of the good technology. I'll stand uh, on the mark. Um, so that, like that. It looks it looks something like that. We've got Paul over here. We've got, well, I mentioned Lisa. My name is Eric. We also have Sonia online. I'm going to point to the screen. She is waving. Excellent. Um, what other kinds of things can I talk about? You know, basically, it's an, we, what we do and what we're trying to do here this morning is really kind of create an environment where folks can share their stories, but also learn from each other. And so what we've got, I'll do something of, a, of an entree to this morning's program, which is a little bit different than usual, is that um, in terms of sharing stories and, and um, being more knowledgeable about the different kinds of companies and different kinds of opportunities that exist in Albuquerque, in our area, and our state and beyond. Um, so what we've got this morning, the way of the slow preamble is, we've got a few different folks who have a wide range, but a really deep experience in helping small business and helping local business thrive. You know, their experiences go well beyond that. However, um, we're going to be hearing from a couple of different people who's, who have had these significant roles in, in helping our community grow. Um, anyway, boy, I, I really didn't practice that. But it was great, Michael's Eric, and I appreciate uh, you. But I, said, I, I don't, I, even, I don't I, even want to see Phil. I'm going to cover you up on the, on the camera there, Phil, because I know you're going, to, you're going to have some comments. Um, I think what we'd like to do first, we've heard, I'm going to, I'll let Carlos know that he's on deck. <laughs> We've heard from Carlos before, uh, Carlos Contreras uh, before, a lot of different roles here in our community. We've heard from him before about a couple of his uh, different businesses that he's done, but today he's got a different, um, a different topic, a different organization he's going to be talking about. Um, I had a, I had an opportunity to be part of, I guess, some of the formative conversations that led to Siembra uh, High School downtown, um, and it's just, I, I just love what they're doing. I don't want to share my my improper recollections from four or five, seven years ago. So Carlos, if you don't mind coming up, let's let's have you talk a little bit about that. Um, and just as far as the the format for this morning, since it's a little bit different than usual, we'll be hearing from Carlos. We're going to be hearing from Danielle at the Downtown Farmers Market and Downtown Arts and Culture District, and also working with the uh, Arts Walk Albuquerque. We're also going to be hearing from Harry Bender, who's with the city of Albuquerque's um, small business um, assistance office. I'm probably getting that a little bit wrong. We'll hear from each of them. There'll be an opportunity for some Q&A about the programs they've got, but I thought it'd be useful since they've got such a wide range, as I said, of experience that uh, after we kind of wrap that up, we can have a little discussion about, you know, other opportunities that we see downtown, questions you may have about growing your business or helping other kinds of businesses grow. Um, without further ado, I will welcome Carlos. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Yay, Carlos. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Carlos Contreras. Uh, I, I find it funny when when the introduction of me is like, well, he does all of these things because I know I confuse people. I'm uh, a jack of many trades and a master of none. But these days I'm here to talk to you about, or today I'm here to talk to you about Siembra Leadership High School. Uh, Siembra Leadership High School, if you have not heard about it, um, has actually been around for five years, uh, but I was talking to Lisa and, and Eric, and thank you, Lisa and Eric, for having us today uh, this morning about the idea that we're sort of in a jump start phase for Siembra. We're five years in, um, but two of those years were COVID years, right? So, um, and two of those years were spent, and the two years before that were spent um, educating and starting the educational journey of like literally a dozen students. Um, so we're, we're working at a charter high school in downtown Albuquerque at 6th and Central that just bought a new building that now uh, from 12 has grown to like 287 students um, in five years, right? Uh, with the dream of growing to about 900 students. 
and supporting students not only in their education, uh, but with housing, post-education, with uh, workforce training and job search while they're in school, um, and certification programs while they're in school, because Siembra is a leadership high school in the sense that it trains entrepreneurs. Um, and so my role with them is an as an entrepreneurial coach, um, which I think is also kind of funny and fitting in our <laughs> in our city, uh, because like Eric laughs, he knows I don't have uh, a background say in any of the things I've done, uh, which may be like marketing and advertising or business development or economic development or small business support and growth. I, I didn't go to school for any of those things. I was born and raised by this city um, and it's a different landscape. And so when I approached Siembra to work with and for them and with our students, uh, I wanted them to realize that like young people need to know you all, right? And need to know all the faces on this screen, uh, need to know about the resources talked about this morning. And not only do they need to know about all those things, but you need to know them. And uh, that's really kind of the most important space I hold in that school is the idea that, um, you know, and Lisa will agree with me and know when we start talking about like losing our brightest and our boldest, right? Uh, and the brain drain that happens out of Albuquerque. Um, my frustration with that conversation and situation is that that's often thought about in the realm of like architects and lawyers and engineers and doctors. And, and where, 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 where is the space for all the artists? <laughs> and where is the space for like the solopreneurs and the micro entrepreneurs? And quite honestly, like these days, the nail techs and the lash techs and the carpenters and, and, and those folks, because we build those folks very well here in Albuquerque. I have a whole building full of like 200 mines that are going to be barbers and cosmetologists and, and sell, resell sneakers and, and do vintage clothing because those are sort of the trades of the day, right? Um, and in a very entrepreneurial sense in a market like Albuquerque that supports micro business and solo entrepreneurship so well. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with letting those students take those small ideas and dreams and build them into sustainable businesses in a, in a small city like ours. Um, so my belief is that we can support them in doing that um, and literally be giving kids diplomas and like either literal or figurative keys to their own business so that they can do whatever they want, right? Maybe that is go to UNM and study something. Uh, maybe that is go to CNM and further their studies in something. Uh, maybe it is to get the MBA to back the business that they already have. Um, but maybe it's just to like start a family and, and raise a family and stay here. Um, maybe it's just to continue the job they have while they continue to build uh, the micro business that they love so much, because that's been my journey for the last 20 years now. Um, you know, where I end up, <laughs> how I feed myself and, and, and pay my mortgage and raise my child. Uh, is a means to an end sometimes for me, a job, right? Um, but so much of what I'm proud to do in this city, for this city and with this city, as it relates to creative economy and art has everything to do with like the dream that has never been let go. Um, and so at Siembra, I believe we're building that kind of reality and possibility for young people. Um, the other thing is, is that like 60 some percent of our students are on uh, what you call individual education plans, IEPs, right? Like, so our students traditionally haven't worked in a very structured, traditionally modeled, whether that's NMPED or like national model for what a school looks like, we're project-based learning. Um, so I'll end with this, we're a project-based learning school um, that is inviting on Friday, anybody that would like to come from noon to four, to 524 Central um, to listen to our teachers, because I'm not a teacher there, talk about the work they do with our students every day. And the work that our students do every day has to do with the way our community moves and operates every day. We're project-based learning, so our, our classes are gonna say, here's our idea for a class, but we need people, right? We need people that own businesses or our stakeholders in a community or just care <laughs> to come in and engage with our students about this idea that we have about how we're gonna work in the community to learn things that have to relate to the state standards that qualify for say like a US history class or an English or, an, or a math class, whatever that might be, our teachers will do that work. But we need in the community partners to say, hey, we'll support that work. Like your, your class can come in and learn 
uh, at my organization a piece of that work, or I'll come into your school and work with your students on certain days as it relates to that project, right? So um, that's Friday from 12 to four, you can come in and hear our, our teachers pitch their project work that's a semester long. Um, and then next Friday, uh, which is the, or no, next week, the week after that, December 12th through the 15th, sorry, um, we're having what we call celebrations of learning. So if you partner with our students and you work with them for a semester, then at the end of that semester, our students present to the community again. Um, we pick outside spaces, right? So at this point, we're trying to network folks like you are here and we we're doing this morning. Uh, we try and put our students in community. We invite the community to come and see their uh, semester long worth work. Um, and they present to you about what they're doing. Um, sometimes those presentations have a lot to do uh, also with the businesses they're building. So it's a lot going on at once. I think Albuquerque <laughs> does that very well um, because we, we learn how to be resilient and, and like committed to the work and dedicated to the work. And so we're just asking for partners in that. Friday, you can come join us, uh, see what our amazing staff does, hear from them and see if you wanna help us in any way. And then the following Friday, you can just see like, if you help us, what that produces. So I'm good. Do I take questions now, Eric, or I get out of the way? I'm going to come over here a little bit. Yeah, I think let's have, let's have some questions. What we'll ask you to do, if you, if you have questions, we'll ask you to come over here so we see you on camera. If you don't mind stating your name, maybe an organization, and then go ahead and ask your question. I'm sure I've got some too, but uh, we've got some great people. Yeah, it's, uh, let me uh, not trip over anything. Move this back a little bit. Right quick. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Rosemary Prince, and I'm an artist. And uh, could you state the address again of the school? Sure, sure, sure. Thank yeah, and, that, and, it's, and that's important. It's 524 Central right now. Um, that will remain to be our building. It's actually like the, the ground floor of the Anasazi building, if you know what the Anasazi building is downtown. Um, and then we're moving into and have purchased 606 and 610 Central, which was formerly uh, Dual Brewing, oh. uh, formerly Electric Playhouse. I'm going to date myself if you're old enough, oh. formerly Banana Joe's. <laughs> so we've, we've, we've now turned what has always been sort of like a bar and entertainment space into an educational institution in downtown Albuquerque. And I think that's what we do. 606 and 610 Central. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. I'm, Good morning. I'm Barbara Dawson with Purple Mulch. We've met before. We yeah. have. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to remind me where that was. Was it here? I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. The reason I'm up here is because I work with UNM and I work in their sales center. And there's, and I don't know if I can invite all of your students to come because I don't know that a room is big enough, but next Wednesday, we're doing a mock role play on sales. So they're playing the, okay. the salesperson, somebody else is playing the buyer. And just to see the kind of work that is going on there in the sales center might be really useful because I believe everybody needs to know sales. So at Siembra, do you do anything in, you know, focus classes on sales or on communication or any of those kinds of classes? Sure. Um, we, I'll, I'll say yes, but we can all like, it's like a yes, but we can always improve. We can always add, we can always augment, right? Like, all of our students are working in different spaces. So we'll do like a general class if we get a partner that is like around marketing. Um, all students have to learn how to pitch a business in like 90 seconds. Oh, yeah. And that can be like a business, an organization, a service, right? It's not mm -hmm. just always about a product. So sales, yes. but you learn how to sell any one of those. Um, so yes, we, we work with them, but we always need like outside experts to like show us what, what we don't see, what we're not looking at, what we don't know. You know, we don't know what we don't know. So yeah. we'd, we'd love to come in that in that direction and show our students some of that. Okay. okay. Right. Thanks. Paul, I'm going to switch back and forth if you don't mind. Okay, sure. uh, Sonia, I like your question about the students. Can you ask that? We'll go to the other one in a minute if we have time. Okay. Uh, Carlos, can we get these students to come to One Million Cups or even present their businesses at One Million Cups, because that would be great to kind of get them involved with what we do. Yeah, so I had every intent of, of asking you all for space to do that and uh, and every intent of getting them down here. It's like leading baby deer to, <laughs> to, 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 to like forage, you know, like I, I wanted to come do this and kind of like be able to show them this, 
Um, so it's not super intimidating. Can they come December 21st or will they be out of school? They'll be out of school. So it would have to be in the new year, but yeah, I would love to launch into the new year with their presence, both physically and digitally, because I think it works for both. Like our model too is, is um, with the 287 students or whatever that number is, um, some of them are fully online. Some of them are online and in person. Some of them are in person during the day and some of them are in person at night. And so um, offering them this would allow for all of our students to have access, which is huge for us. Just let me know the day so I can get some extra credits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. And then, yeah, if you tell them donuts, man, no, I'll still be back there. <laughs> Hi, uh, Paul Sauter with Equity. We remember each other. Yeah. So I, I just want to commend you on problem-based learning for students that don't fit into the traditional curriculum, because not everyone can listen to someone talk for an hour and then take a bubble test. And that's what we're set up to educate. And we can't afford to throw away people in society. So I just want to commend you for picking up the people that don't relate to that. And uh, problem-based learning um, became part of a core of medical student education about 20 years ago, because they realized you can't make people memorize that amount of material unless you can show them what good they can do with it. So uh, congratulations on, on uh, joining that for high school students. And that means that we're not gonna lose those people. We're not gonna throw them away and we can't afford to get rid of people in society because we have big problems we have to fix and those kids are gonna be part of it. So thanks. Yeah, no doubt. And, and I would just say that, that thanks needs to be extended to Jackie Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's she's now the head of the school. Um, Jackie Baldwin, Natalie Tavitas, Brian Perplu, they run things. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the project based learning model and the idea that like there's there there's a space for every kid uh, really is a thing that Siembra practices. We're at 360 degrees of degrees of support model school. So it's not about just the kid in the seat, but it's like the mom at home, the dad at home, the grandparents, whoever's whoever's the guardian, right? Um, and like about food security and transportation and safety of a home. So yeah, we, we aim to support in that manner and, and we take it very seriously. So thank you. Bill, go ahead and unmute. You can ask your question. Hi, it's Phil from New York. <laughs> uh, late of uh, New Mexico. So just to clarify my mind, what, what's the kind of age group of uh, your students? And um, the other question I posed here was, uh, what kind of um, subject matters, business subject matters, are you looking for for your students? Um, and the reason I'm asking those two questions is because I've done several um, presentations with UNM students on business subjects. And um, being as I'm in New York, I'd have to do it online. Um, but I think you're you're okay with that. So they're my three questions. Cool, yeah. Um, you know, like I work as a support person for students, so I don't I don't interface with every single one of them. Uh, but with my like engagement with them, I would say that some of the large larger bits of interest in terms of starting your own business would be in like the cosmetology field are actually looking at putting a barber school and cosmetology mm -hmm. school in the new school oh. um, so that they could go to school in the day and go to barber or cosmetology school at night, graduate with both. Um, so those fields in the resale realm of things, so like sneakers and clothing, like buying to resale is a big thing for them these days. Um, some folks in art and tattoo, uh, some folks in IT, but they're they're not sure what IT, I think, completely means because we aren't, right? Mm -hmm. like. I always think IT is just like the guy that fixes the computer like and does simple things, um, <laughs> but it's much larger than that. And then and then to be quite real and honest, and it, this is a slippery slope for me, but I'm trying to navigate it for them because they deserve access and that's in the cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. Like we have a bunch of students that are like, I wanna do this and, then, and, and you can't immediately shut it down, right? Because I feel like then we are only like continuing to hold the barriers in place mm -hmm. that that our society has already created for them and then in the cannabis industry. So um, those are so, some of the major interests. So I have a follow-up. Is, is anybody guiding these students on entrepreneurship and how you approach a market to start a business? You're sort of looking at that guy, Phil. Um, and, and, and to a degree of only having been like um, trained on the, like on the spot, right? Like I, I don't... Like I was saying, I don't have formal 
education in business. So I just have a, a knack for doing business in Albuquerque, um, but also saw that, that in adding myself to the staff that we just have teachers. And I don't mean that in any, in, in any way of a slight to teachers, but they're not small business owners, right? So we need folks like you, Phil, is what, I'm, what I'll just say. We need right. a, a number so, of people to train a number of different people. So I'd like to get your contact details as well. And um, just uh, another piece of information. I'm a National Science Foundation trained mentor, and I've taken several companies or, uh, you know, new companies through the i program um, and, and helped them go to market. So I've quite a good background on what the students would need to do to, to be actually get a product or a service to market, how they assess that market um, and how they can uh, approach that market. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, Lisa has my stuff. That might be the easiest way with Eric. Before we let you go, uh, well, I won't ask all of our questions, but I will, I will do the red and green question. That false. Oh, excellent, uh, well, of course. Well, and the other thing I'll say is, so having been part of uh, some of the, what I think is happening this Friday, just to our folks here in the room and online, it, it's so much of our, of course, depends on the project and the students involved. There are folks who are, you know, better entrepreneurs than all of our be. Yeah. <laughs> and there are folks who are like, you know, they're sitting back, they're not necessarily feeling like they, they really want to talk. And, and so they're a little bit more maybe introspective. But I think there's real great opportunity just to kind of show folks that there are a lot of different options. So I'm just really happy with what you do and thank you. Um, thank you all. And I think Sonia, my, I, whoever first reached out, I think it was Sonia, just thankful to her for, for bringing you back. Yeah, thank you. Because it's great to hear. Yeah, Thanks. come Friday. They just deserve yeah. to be cared about. What time is it Friday? Uh, from like noon to four. You can come anytime. Okay. Yeah, anytime. We'll do 524. 524 Central. Yeah. They're both on the same block. So we'll keep your eyes out. There'll be a small sign out front. Yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the things that, that I've always wanted to do and done a very poor job of is sharing different events and activities that happen around downtown. If you've been coming to One Million Cups for uh, more than seven years, just kidding. Um, we've, we've, talked about, uh, we've talked about the downtown art walk. Um, we've talked about a couple of the different fairs and other opportunities for folks to both buy and sell their wares. Um, and, and I've always wanted to get Gabe or one of the folks from the, from the team that does that puts our work together to, to come and share and do a real, real pitch. But um, oftentimes we're talking about that just the week of the event and Wednesday ends up being the day that a lot of stuff gets put into place and it's just the worst day possible. So my, my timing is bad. However, this time we took a little step forward and Gabe said, hey, you know, I can't make it, but we've got somebody else from the downtown arts and culture district to runs and helps with a lot of these different programs. And she can come and talk a little bit about Art Walk, but I'm hoping, uh, so we're gonna invite Danielle up here, um, but, um, and I'm hoping you can share maybe just a, a snippet on a couple of the other programs that you run as well. And I'll, I'll throw some images behind you and stuff like that. So thank you very much. I have um, notes and things. Um, my name is Danielle Schulbaum. I'm the Associate Director for Downtown Main Street and Arts and Cultural District. Um, we are a nonprofit entity that does a lot of community-based projects um, and programs. So our largest um, and longest running program is the Downtown Growers Market. Um, we also participate in a variety of other grant funded things. Um, we run the Downtown Albuquerque gift card which I have a little image here. Um, and we also are putting on a shop and stroll next weekend. Um, Albuquerque Art Walk is also now one of our programs. Um, they were brought under us last year. Um, prior to that, we had been a fiscal agent for them to assist in um, funding for the program. Um, I've been involved with Main Street now for the past three years. Um, and it's really kind of been, um, a giant pleasure to be honest. Um, downtown Albuquerque is a unique space and I've really come to call it my home and really love all the players down there, um, all the different businesses and things like that. Um, so I'll just read through a few mission statements so you can kind of get more of an idea. So main streets are a specific uh, economic development based nonprofit that has an accreditation process. We are a city 
uh, downtown Albuquerque Main Street, there is a state level Main Street and a national level Main Street. There are specific criteria that we have to follow and hit every year to be an accredited um, Main Street organization. And so our mission is to promote and support downtown's economic, social, and creative vitality through community-driven projects and programs. Um, the Growers Market mission is to support and promote local agriculture, small business development, and community engagement in order to better the economics, health, well-being, and education of New Mexico residents and visitors. Um, and then Albuquerque Art Walk. Um, Art Walk is an independent arts organization and community of artists working to elevate New Mexico's emerging creative economy the platform organizes block by block placemaking events that support local artists and local brick and mortar establishments. The purpose is to spark the vibrancy of the arts by organizing experiences at the neighborhood level, encouraging all to explore the essence of New Mexico. Um, so I first got involved with Art Walk actually when I moved here. It's um, now been around for five years. Um, and I started going just as a resident of Albuquerque. Um, I really enjoyed being able to have a little map that kind of gave me all the different things that were happening in the downtown area. I really enjoyed the types of artists that Gabe works with. Um, I have an art degree, I have an undergrad in art. And so you see um, one of the great things about New Mexico and Albuquerque that I really love is that you can see the, the, the level of art all the way from a beginner to a really well-established artist. And so I feel like Art Walk does a great job of finding a lot of these really talented folks that reside right here in Albuquerque and in New Mexico and aren't necessarily being brought in from other places. Um, so the goal of Art Walk is to pair, it's a great, I mean, one of the reasons that we got so involved with it is because it's really a, a beautiful way to support economic development in our downtown um, by pairing the artists with these businesses that are sponsoring the program. Um, it, really drives folks to come out and learn about some of these local artists. Um, Gabe will, what he will do is he'll work with spaces to either set up an exhibition um, in the space. So usually breweries, distilleries, that kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, folks can come out, experience all these amazing artists, but also support these local brick and mortar businesses. Um, pretty much every business that, that Art Walk works with we survey and do all that type of stuff. And every Art Walk Friday is their best Friday of the month. Um, it's one of the most uh, attended downtown events every month. The fact that it's a monthly event also helps create this um, consistent economic drive for downtown. Um, our other big program, the Growers Market, does some kind of similar on Saturdays. That takes you to a park, but it does help affect businesses around the area and things like that. And it's also something that helps drive people into downtown Albuquerque, um, which has gotten a bit of a reputation. And I think some folks are a little worried about coming downtown, which kind of bums me out because I live and breathe and walk and do all the stuff downtown. But um, but yeah, so I think it kind of helps, you know, the healthy activity like that is really what kind of helps bring people out, feel safe to come walk around and do all that type of stuff. Um, we got involved specifically with Art Walk during like right around the pandemic. Um, it took us a little while to get farmers markets as an essential business. We were being told we couldn't have non-food vendors. Um, so we worked, I partnered up with Gabe specifically to try to figure out other resources for a lot of our small um, artist vendors. They're usually about half of our applicants for the growers market, which we don't have room for. So we have a process to determine who is in and waitlisted and try to fit as many of them in as possible. But we do um, focus on farmers first um, for the downtown growers market. Um, so this Friday is Albuquerque Art Walk. It happens not every first Friday, but mostly. <laughs> um, it is. It didn't necessarily intend to be a first Friday event. It was meant to be a monthly event. It is different than Albuquerque Art Scrawl, which is another um, organization that works to promote art around the city, the entire city. So Art Scrawl focuses on all of Albuquerque. They've been around since the 80s. Um, and they, you know, the folks that work with them, they provide like a listing and that type of stuff as well. Um, but it is different in the sense that they focus mostly on galleries and art spaces, whereas Art Walk will focus on a variety of brick and mortar businesses. They've worked closely with Siempra in the past um, to allow some of their students to sit up and sell from their, um, their programs that they're trying to do with Siempra. Um, so it, it can fit all kinds of different molds and the folks that are put on the map every month are the folks that are paying a sponsorship 
and participating in the program. Um, so I definitely recommend going out and like really supporting those folks. Um, but I mean, the great thing about it is that while those businesses are supporting the program, everyone in downtown mm -hmm. gets to benefit from this um, event. So um, yeah, Friday, I would definitely come out. We're doing a fundraiser for Art Walk actually um, this Friday at Bozy Brothers. So if you buy a drink, uh, they'll be donating a dollar of beverage. And we're also just taking donations to help with paying for the programs. Um, Gabe is very adamant about making sure the artists that participate get paid for their work while they're doing all of this. So a lot of the funding goes to that type of um, that type of payment. And yeah, and then we're also, I'm organizing a downtown shop and stroll, um, which is just basically come out, support retail businesses, beverage performance spaces downtown, which will be happening next Saturday from four to eight. Um, I'm also on the board for the rail yards market. So we <laughs> kind of involved in a lot of things, um, kind of also like Carlos, jack of all trades, a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, so there'll be that going on next weekend. Also, um, Saturday and Sunday, the rail yards holiday market is like the biggest holiday extravaganza of local businesses downtown. Um, but that'll be during the day from 10 to four. There's also a Borella shop and stroll happening in conjunction with the holiday market. Um, we'll be doing the downtown shop and stroll in the evening to kind of alleviate some of the crazy, the rail yards market brings in like 10,000 people a day. So it's a lot of folks coming into downtown. So we're trying to kind of spread it out a bit. Um, but we do also run this downtown gift card program, which is basically a digital gift card that you can purchase on our website. Um, and you can show it to different businesses that have participated in the program and use that card at multiple downtown businesses. Um, the money from the gift card goes right into their bank account. And so um, it's kind of a cool way to be able to make sure that the, this gift card is being spent in the downtown economy. Um, yeah, I guess those are the main things. We have other stuff too. But. <laughs> only, yeah, only a dozen yeah. things. So, yeah. so first of all, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've got a lot of questions. The, the first question that, that I wanted to get at is um, I hear that there is some there, there's some development work happening about making the, the farmers market all year round. Is that is there anything that we can do now? I know there's there's been like uh, what is it there's been public engagement process around this. There's been info tables at the farmers market. I'm wondering if there's anything like right now or is you know it's winter so we're not going to see much. <laughs> yeah, well, it's still in the works, but yes, we are working on an expansion project at the downtown growers market that is in partnership with Three Sisters Kitchen, um, which is actually an organization that we helped to um, incubate out of Main Street. Um, but it was after a lot of engagement with mm -hmm. vendors at the growers market. So they offer a lot of um, programs around uh, specifically like training people to bring a food product to market. So if you have an item that you want to sell and you want to package, you can take a course with them among a variety of other programs that they do. Um, so the plan is to partner up with them and we are working to purchase a lot, which is right next to the park where the farmer's market happens. Um, and we'll be building a new building on it that will house a space that we can have an indoor market during the winter so that we have um, the market at the park like we normally do. We will have an extended space for more vendors at that spot. It's right across the street so folks can go to the park, walk over, and then we'll be continuing it as a year round market. Um, while Three Sisters also has space on this lot that will have room for the commercial kitchens for all of their needs. There'll be a local food shop um, and then their cafe also. So that's the plan. We're still kind of a couple of years out, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's the goal. Yeah, just a great program to help spur local and downtown, you know, uh, meaningful, you know, authentic development versus something crazy. Well, and support farmers. Yeah. And one of the main goals that we have with this expansion is figuring out ways to assist farmers in accessing funding, whether that's us being a facilitator for a grant um, or a loan or things like that, because it is, it's really hard um, to access some of that type of stuff, especially as a really small diversified mm -hmm. farmer. A lot of grants will require that you have the money up front and then you get reimbursed, sometimes even years later. So if you have a project you want to do, like build out a new greenhouse, you have to have that $7,000 up front and then the USDA reimburses you. So our hope and goal is that we could be the in-between for that type of thing to help facilitate money so that these farmers um, can also grow with us and um, bring more food into non-summer months. So. Uh, other questions from, from this group or I'll, I'll get back onto the online thing myself in a second. But uh, any other questions from the room here? 
about so much different stuff. Um, a lot of things, yeah. <laughs> um, we also have like a street tree program we're doing. We're trying to bring more street uh -huh. trees into downtown. Um, I'm working on an art collective as well to try to provide more assistance to really small um, art producers as far as accessing things um, for bigger events. If folks want to participate in the growers market or any type of city permitted mm -hmm. event, um, there's a lot of things you have to have in place, such as a business registration, insurance, all these other pieces that can often be um, barriers to a lot of folks, especially if they're doing it as a side gig. So mm -hmm. we're trying to facilitate a collective that would give them an umbrella business and uh, license and insurance they could utilize to test out their uh -huh. market, their products at a bigger market without necessarily having to like take the leap into starting a business and paying taxes on something that they're not sure about yet. So. Um, We've also partnered with Arts Hub on that project, and they're working on a website that will also be a space for folks to be able to list what they do as an artist, as well as opportunities on the same website and ways for people to search and look for um, people of all types of mm -hmm. media. So if you're looking for a photographer, you can search and find a local photographer. If you're looking for a mural artist. Um, so we'll be working on that in the new year as well. I think that actually might be a good transition to Carrie, who's joining us online. Cool. So first of all, thank you. Oh, first of all, red and green, red or green, red and green. Which which would you prefer? Red and green. Are we talking about chili? Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, red. I like red. All right. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Thank you very much. Right. Um, you. And we'll have an opportunity for a little more discussion afterwards. Let's see. Yeah, I'll take. Are you? I think you already ended the share. That's great. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll going up. Carrie, I've got a great background there. I'm going to do a co-host in case you need to share anything. Welcome. You're muted. Hi, good morning. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you. This is my dining room. It's my rock and roll wall because I'm I'm a grown-up and I can frame my rock and roll posters. Um, <laughs> um, I'm Carrie Vender. I'm I work under the economic development department with the city of Albuquerque. I'm the small business liaison. Um, I'm currently the only person in the small business office, so I get a lot of, um, I field a lot of phone calls from uh, small businesses, both businesses that are up and running, businesses that are, um, have been, that are just starting out. I usually get people at two ends of the spectrum, people that are just starting out and need to know how to start their business, which are my favorite because they kind of get a good start. And then the other side is the the business has been running a while and is struggling and they they need a lifeline and i'm i'm good at both of those sides but i would rather see somebody in the beginning stages than that somebody that's in the struggling stages um which a lot of businesses right now are so um i'm just here to give you the message that like let's keep some a lot of dollars local um this shopping season um as we all know like the economy has changed, the way people shop has changed. Um, I probably follow more businesses on social media than actual people. And, and they're putting out the messages that, that they are struggling. They're posting pictures of empty dining rooms and, um, you know, holy cow, I could use some more business. So um, I posted a link to um, the downtown um, um gift card in the chat and then also the this the city of albuquerque has a shop local link that basically just has a list of every shopping event that's happening this this season but of course you know beyond christmas um let's really just get out there and support our our small businesses um it's it's tough out there <laughs> um that's kind of all i've got but i'm a, i'm a free resource with the city i contract with several business consultants that are also free and paid for by my department. Um, so any any business um, in town can can contact my office and get get resources or one on one uh, mentoring. Um, I've owned and I've owned three businesses in, in town, sold sold two of them. I know what it's like to have one fail. So I've, I've been in the trenches. So that's share, share the biggest one, Carrie, the biggest name so people understand who you are. <laughs> uh, I, I founded both Cake Fetish and Rebel Donut. Um, sold them both, and then I had a I had a short-lived bakery called Sugar Crush that went down in flames. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually in the purchase in the. 
process right now of purchasing another small business with a partner. I will be keeping my my job at the city, but so I'm about to get down in the trenches with everybody again. So, um, so I, I get it. I love to talk to people about their businesses and find them resources, hopefully before it's too late. So um, get out there and spend, spend your money locally and um, send anybody my way that is having problems in their business because we would love to help. Harry, we also appreciate you sending entrepreneurs our way. We had Mercedes. Is that how you say it? Mercedes? Mercedes, yes. Yeah, at Wichita's awesome. closet a couple of weeks ago. She was last. Um, so keep sending your mm -hmm. entrepreneurs our way. We'd love to talk to them, help them, anything that we can do to work together. So well, and, and she's hooked up with your um, your video guys. Yay. Oh, nice. oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. it's it's great. This it works, right? The system works. It works. <laughs> yeah, Rana, we have a question for you, Carrie. Hi, I'm Barbara Dawson with Purple Mulch again. And I, I'm actually I've got so many artists in the room. I'm looking for someone that locally that does gauge work. Because oh, half inch gauges. So if you have anybody that does that kind of work, I, I'm i looking for a gift. But, uh, so I'd rather go local than go to Cottonwood and shop at whatever that store is. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to gauge your own years? Yeah. Carlos, What's you're, that? You're not going to gauge your own years? Um, not, not this year. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. A half inch gauge. <laughs> We've got anyone on the chat. I have a question. Yes, come on up. So, Carrie, how does one get in touch with you? My email address is cvender, that's V E N D E R, at cabq.gov. Cvender at abq.gov. Cabq.gov. Up there it says dot com and it's dot gov. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Did I write dot com? Um, no, it's just. Oh. I think, I'm not sure if we copied it wrong or. Okay, I also write it wrong all the time, so it's yeah. <laughs> awesome. And um, I'll give you my my phone number too. Um, it's seven six eight thirty thirty seven thirty. Thank you so much, Gary. I'm, I'm going to jump in. I asked a question online, but I I, um, I did it. In, I, I'll just ask uh, in person. Oh. Um, uh, so yeah, I, did you say that there's like a buy local guy or something? One of the things I mean, there's so many different great opportunities, you know, 505 market, some of the ones, the Bozy and other ones that, uh, that Danielle mentioned, is there any collection of these? Because I've just been scrambling to try and keep track and I, I failed. So we're, <laughs> I'm working on that with the, the mayor's office. They, they put one out that's. I, I'm pretty sure that's probably just holiday specific right now, but it's um, just go to the city website, cibq.gov and then slash buy local. And I'm, I've been trying to work with them on, on, on some sort of platform or website where it's truly a, a buy local guide for the city. I think the one that's out there probably just has uh, holiday Ooh. shopping events, but um, we're, we're actively working on it. We know it's needed and wanted. Great. Thank you very much for joining us and for all the good work you do. Thank you. Let's see. That's all we have in terms of presenters. Anybody? Oh, um, Sonia, go ahead and share your gift certificate. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if anyone, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sonia Doing. I am a, an award-winning and best-selling author, and I run the Women's Thriller Writers Association. And uh, we have gift certificates because I've had a lot of people come up and ask me, how do I give such and such to my friends? So the gift certificates are good for the short story a thon, which is where we write Friday night, we start writing, Sunday we published Amazon, and 90% of the authors hit best selling lists with their short stories, and they're they're really good. They're not they're not crap stories. So uh great stories, or uh the gift certificate is also good for. The Page Turner Academy, which is a course where I take everyone from getting your fans first and then and finishing the book and publishing and selling. 
Um, and then also we have a 20, I, I have a 2023 writer's planner that's coming out soon. And so that gift certificate can also go towards that. And I put the link in the website, but if, for those of you uh, at Fat Pipe, it is at womensthrillerwriters.com under the must-haves. Thanks so much. Um, since we have a little bit of time, we'll have Jeff go ahead and announce your event and then Sue, you can do yours so that people hear, hear more. Sure. So we've got two events coming up. We have uh, the State of Venture Capital in New Mexico. Um, and I dropped that into the chat that is going to be on, I already forgot the date. <laughs> um, I, I think it was December 13th. Oh, I'm saying. Yeah, December 13th uh, at noon. And I dropped the registration in the chat. So we're going to we're gonna hear about all the exciting stuff that is happening at the State Investment Council. You may have heard that they're going to be working on um, some major new venture studio and venture capital initiatives. So we'll hear about that, um, as well as a few of the other things going on at the State EDD and the New Mexico Finance Authority um, and everything that's going on with the New Mexico Collateral Program and the Angel Investment Tax Credit. So there'll be kind of a broad overview of everything venture capital in New Mexico. Um, and then on December 8th, this is a uh, for job training Albuquerque of uh, the winter workshop. So this is the city of Albuquerque's program where you get any uh, free training for any small business for any of your employees uh, if you're headquartered in the city um, of Albuquerque. So come on down if you haven't taken advantage of that program before. It's a, it's a really good program. You can send any of your employees to any of the partners that are offered by any of the training partners, um, even things as expensive as getting a commercial driver's license um, or getting uh, uh, getting a certificate in full stack um, coding or anything like that. Those are really expensive trainings and they're totally free as long as your city is in, your business is, is headquartered within the city of Albuquerque. So come here more information about that. Great. Awesome. Yeah, come on up. And then Sue, after... Danielle will have you announce yours. I just want to let folks know that as far as like events and all of that go, one of the things that our organization also have, does is works to promote what's happening downtown. Um, so I do recommend if signing up for our newsletter. We do a monthly newsletter that does a feature on all kinds of stuff coming up downtown as far as like business interviews and things like that. But um, I'm also on our social media all the time sharing <laughs> all the different things so and it's all local stuff so if you are looking for initiatives and things like that um and i did partner with the city on coming up with the list that carrie was talking about as far as all the holiday shopping options for folks that are coming up um there's a variety of things from tiny markets to you know shopping strolls all that kind of stuff so there are a lot of things happening and um feel free to also contact me if you have questions and stuff because that's like the world i live in thank you and how do we contact you um, so the main website is downtownacd.org. Um, Arts and Culture District makes more sense to people than a Main Street, so we kind of use that platform mm -hmm. more than the Main Street one. Um, Downtown Growers has its own website, Art Walk has its own website, but um, our newsletter is called Crossroads, and you can sign up on there, and it also has links to our Facebook and Instagram pages, um, and it's also got an email on there, um, info at downtownacd.org that I'll get if you have questions. So much information. Yeah. Sue, do you have an event now. you want to share? Yeah, thanks. Oops, I'm sorry. Did you say sit? I, I'll call on you next, Bill. I know you have a shout out to do that, but let's let Sue tell her event. This is um, just real quick. I'll read this. Um, and excuse me, I'm just turning the corner on COVID. Um, so I'm asking people to save the date on December 14th, Arrowhead Center's Fast sixth annual New Mexico SBIR STTR Innovation Summit. And you'll hear from panelists about how innovation is key to keeping your company or product in the forefront. They'll have program managers um, from SBIR STTR also speaking. And this is a nationwide event. Last year, they had over 380 participants from six different states. And I put the link in there um, for people to sign up. It is free. Thanks. I guess Bill has a shout out. My turn to go? Yeah, your turn. Okay. Um, so a couple of shout outs, but um, first off, I want to say next week, um, and, and I don't mean this in, in, in well, let me just say, um, I'm going to the Dominican Republic just to get some sunshine. 
And I'm going to try and log in from there and see if we can do, I've got this thing about trying to log into 1 million ABQ from anywhere I'm traveling to. So I'm going to try and log in from the Dominican Republic next week. But my shout out is that um, I've managed to get my book into the North Shear Book Company uh, here in upstate New York. It's a bookstore that covers about five different bookstores around the, the area. Um, and also thanks to Sonia for a whole bunch of information she sent me on trying to get my book marketed. For those people that have already bought my book, and I know some of you have down there in the audience, uh, it'd be nice for you to come and give me a review. Um, once you've, uh, well, even if you haven't read it, just give me a review because um, I need to build up some reviews and I'm sure Sonia would tell you to do exactly the same. So um, I've got a book signing with this company um, in the spring um, and I'm going to go to another bookstore and see if I can get uh, in, in another one down in Albany um, before Christmas. Congratulations, Bill. That's awesome. Um, we do have presenters the next coming week, so I wanted to let you know that you need to come back next week and the week after that. Uh, December 7th is MNT Smart Solutions. And December 14th, we're going to have new energies and alternative technologies. We're looking for a presenter for December 21st to round out the year. And then I suspect we'll probably take the Wednesday off between Christmas and New Year. So if you know of anyone who needs to apply to present, please send us, send them, um, send us, you know, their contact info or send them to the website to apply to present. Hey, Paul, I want to come up and tell everyone goodbye. Sure. <laughs> so, come on, come on up. Give a shout out. So first, I want to give a shout out to Barbara and Dr. Norm. Uh, we did one of their proof of concept videos, which was just an amazing shoot. They're getting compiled now so that you guys will be seeing those, uh, the proof of concept here shortly. Get your we Kleenex out. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Great job. And we also shot a proof of concept for Mercedes, and that is also awesome. I'm in the editing works of that one. So Oscar's working on theirs. I'm working on Mercedes. Then we also, in the ether, uh, it's a lady named Madi. We're, we're doing her event, but we also are making it into like a a documentary leading up to the event day. So thank you guys so much. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to close it out. Well, uh, last week was Thanksgiving. We spent some time thinking about what we're thankful for. And I think if you look around about what happened today, um, you see that many hands are trying to lift up entrepreneurship in New Mexico from the nail salon to the high tech science company. And uh, everyone here can lend a hand. And I encourage you to do that. So see you next week. Keep working on it. Thank you. Thank you.